hi everyone i hope you all are doing well in my today's video session i'm going to introduce the concept of acquiring authentication token from a app registration configured for a native or a desktop application okay so pretty simple in my last video sessions i had already explained how to create the app registrations okay now i have created one such app registration uh, for my native or a console application but remember while selecting the application type don't select as a web or a web api instead select it as a native or desktop application okay so well that's being said let's start with the implementation okay so let me go to the code yeah i have written a simple service i access token provider basically a contract which says that if you give me client id client secret tenant id and login url i will get you an access token from my active directory okay and the implementation is pretty simple okay so what i have done is i have made use of the microsoft's mzal library or microsoft authentication library as the microsoft's adl library is deprecated and there will be no further future enhancements or any kind of security fixes to that particular library uh, i have migrated myself from adl to mzal library you can go to the msdn documentation for the detailed step by step instructions on how we can migrate from adl to mzal okay i i will leave it up to you people to further dig down from that perspective so I have installed the Nugget package uh, microsoft.identity.client for my MZAL library in order to get the authorization tokens. Okay, so I'll go through the method to get access token async. Simple, I am specifying the scope. Okay, to what scope I am acquiring this token. So I'm going to use the default scope of dot default, but there are multiple scopes available in order to configure your app registration permissions it can be a open id it can be a profile it can be a user dot read all it's up to us how we configure so i'm going with the dot default because it will serve my purpose basically so i'm using a builder called public client application builder coming from the mzal library okay so what this builder does basically okay it creates a basically public client application this builder the public client application builder will basically return us a i public client application or a public client application in order to make communication with our app registration and extract a token from our active directory so the first step being we are calling the create method we are passing the client id or our app registration id or app id okay then we are setting the authority and what is my authority authority is always simple it's a login url that is https colon slash slash login dot microsoft online dot com slash your tenant id or your organization's tenant id okay which forms the authority with the redirect uri i have set to http colon slash slash localhost please keep this in mind that when you have configured your app registration as a native app registration or a desktop application based app registration you must set an url of this kind the redirect uri of this kind like http colon slash slash localhost for other possibilities being for the native client we can make use of this one also for the multi-tenancy with this common being used where you specify the tenant id and uh, for the live sdk they have given this url and for the mzel again I, we can make use of localhost or we can make use of mzel i have gone with the mostly followed approach of http colon slash slash localhost for my console based application okay so this is the most important step you must configure this redirect uri http colon slash slash localhost in the app registration as well as in your code you have to mention that okay otherwise uh, this call will fail okay so what i'm doing basically now after providing the authority after providing the redirect uri i'm calling the build method which builds me a public client application on that public client application I'm calling the acquire token interactive. See the method, guys. Okay, there are two types of uh, public. Sorry, yeah, this kind of client application builders have been provided. One is public client application has been provided in order to authenticate your desktop uh, based applications, like it may be a console application or it may be uh, some UI application. Okay. For this kind of application types, we must make use of public client application builder and see we are not at all passing the client secret over here. We get the token interactively. That means user will enter the username and 
password in order to authenticate himself and get the access token but there is one more implementation called confidential client application builder which is specifically meant for web apis and web applications because those are hosted on your app service okay or your web server that's why in that scenario you are required to pass your client secret in order to generate the access token or authorization token in that scenario you will just call acquire token silent that's it you don't get interactive page in order to enter your username and password simply you have to call that acquire token silent and pass the scopes okay so i'm going to explain the confidential client application builder in, uh, usage in my next video so let's stick to this one okay so as my uh, public client application has been built now i have called acquire token interactive and i have passed my scopes when this method is called you will be redirected to a web browser asking you to enter your username and password and if that user exists on my active directory which is default directory then only i will be able to get the token otherwise that authentication will fail just for your information okay if i get the access token successfully that means yes i'm authenticated user and yes i can go ahead and use the application this is a very trivial application example i have made use of to demonstrate how you can safeguard your native applications okay but you can, there are many other facilities or features provided using which you can further safeguard this kind of native applications okay so well that's being said uh, let's run the application now so i have entered my username now i will enter my password okay So click on sign in. Yes, can you see the message? Authentication complete. You can return to the application and feel free to close this browser tab because you have interactively authenticated yourself. Application got the token and getting app, uh, authorization token means you are authenticated user and application has given its output for you. So the required functionality has run after authenticating the user itself. Okay. So this is how we should make use of app registrations in order to authenticate ourselves. Now let's go to the failure scenario. What happens if the user doesn't provide a proper uh, application or app registration related details? Okay, what I will do is basically I will simply change either my directory ID or tenant ID or some, my application ID or app ID to something else and I try to access the application. Let's see what happens there. Okay, let me make those changes quickly. Uh, so as I have deliberately made my app ID to something else, I have made some two letter changes, okay, in order to make the authentication or this authorization flow to fail. So if I run this, see unauthorized access because this particular call got failed and the token is not returned by my service that is authentication provider. So that's why application shown me unauthorized access and it exited okay so i hope you people have understood the concept of app registrations and how you can safeguard your both web as well as native applications okay in my next session i'm going to explain how to safeguard the web applications also for today thank you for listening and yep have a nice day